Well, it's a trillion dollar question. Why do so many startup companies come from one of the world's smallest nations? Here's Chris Mitchell with the answer. Israel is a nation of slightly more than seven million people. Yet per capita, it leads the world in technology startup companies. One reason for Israel's leading role is its military and the kind of innovative leaders it produces. Veterans of the Israeli military, once they retire, they join the commercial market and they apply the different defense cutting edge technologies into the medical market, telecommunications, uh, cell, uh, cellular uh, market, etc. So what's Israel's significance to America? The three largest airports in America uh, implement Israeli technology for security, as well as the homeland security. When you go in New York City, uh, those cameras that you see aren't ordinary cameras. They have Israeli technology implemented in them, and basically it can, it can scan your license plate, give uh, vital information, your name, address, where you work, your credit card information, your recent purchases, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's also basically uh, America's military defense system, the Patriot missile, uh, which is a uh, surface to air def uh, missile defense system, as well as the Aegis, which is, which is sea to air missile defense system. Um, that technology was invented in Israel. And if you see on the bottom right hand side, that's a million dollar uh, helmet mounted queuing system. And so what that does is for the F-16 fighters in America, they basically have the whole cockpit in that one lens and so they're able to do whatever they can instead of having to look at the cockpit uh, without that in their helmet. So, Daniel? So now, what's really crucial about this presentation is that Israel is home to entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurship in Israel, or in, 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 Israeli and entrepreneur goes hand in hand. And some of you may have seen that in your classes with Professor Seidman and Professor Harsky, um, where they take the initiative to do brilliant things. Now, Google's CEO and chairman, Eric Schmidt, said that Israel is the second best place for entrepreneurship behind America. Steve Ballmer, the CEO of Microsoft, said Microsoft is an Israeli company in so much as it is an American company. And Warren Buffett, in 2006, broke his rule of not investing in foreign countries by investing $4.5 billion in Israel. So I want to leave you with this one thought. This is what an NBC Universal VP wondered. Why is this happening in Israel? I've never seen so much chaos and so much innovation in one tiny place. So I think by now we've, we've told you why you want to visit Israel, where in Israel you should visit. And to give you an idea of what, how to do business in Israel, we're inviting Professor Simon to talk about business <laughs> etiquette. Just a few words about doing business in Israel. I promise I'll be brief. Uh, we stated Israel is a small country with uh, many protocols. And when you deal with Israeli business people, bear in mind they're very warm, friendly, yet very methodical, scientific, and they're very frank. If they like an idea, they'll hug you and embrace it. If they don't like the idea, they tell you in your face, you're wasting my time, but let me invite you for dinner, OK? <laughs> so you have to have a strong skin in order to uh, deal with that. We also mentioned, plan to be in the meeting on time. Your Israeli host will be late. <laughs> because if you come on time, you're considered in Israel to be a nerd, OK? So you never show up on time. So don't expect it, OK? Uh, there are many holidays there. I, I think it's a mistake. The office hours are not 8 to 5. They're more like 7 to midnight or something. And the reason being, they do business with the US typically, or with the Far East, with China, the US. So they pretty much walk around the clock. They get up early to catch with China, and they go to sleep late to do business with the US. So it's pretty much become now, like over here in many ways, around the clock. The other point which you have to bear in mind is, Israeli business people play very high premium on interpersonal trust. Everybody I meet in Israel, it's a matter of uh, three degrees of separation. You know, I know them, I know the cousin, I know the neighbor. If not, I ask them where they served in the army. And in minutes, I can check on them. So it's very difficult to cheat over there, OK? Similarly, when you come from anywhere in the world, they have the way to check on you. So if they trust you, a lot of the business is done, as we call in here, Mazal which is a handshake. In effect, uh, Robert Uman got 
Nobel Prize in Economics proving why it does make sense in certain communities to work without formal contracting. The reason is very simple. If you cheat once, you get cut out of the loop and nobody will ever do business with you. And trust is built on repetition. If you deliver on time, if you're honest, I don't need to spend much time and delay with law and contracting, but God forbid I find you cheating, you're kicked out and you're never around. So start small, build your trust, and it's true not for, just for Israel, but for many parts in the world. And so long as they gain the trust that you are smart enough, you can deliver, you are creative, the world is yours. They would love to work with you. They are, as I said, worldly. Every Israeli you meet have been to 15 countries as a minimum. Uh, as we speak now, uh, my niece, she finished her military service in Israel a year ago. She was a career officer for three years after high school. And she's now traveling alone at age of 22 in South America, Brazil, Argentina, Peru, Bolivia, whatever, for 11 months. She's coming to see me in New York in June, then she goes back to Israel to start her university education. So unless you have like 15 stamp on your passports, nobody even starts talking to you. Okay? That's the, the, the sign of going. So like many of us in here, we're very international. So uh, go do business, enjoy it, and thank you very much. A beautiful afternoon.